The San Francisco Bay Area just experienced something that has seismologists paying very close attention. A swarm of earthquakes hit the San Ramon area, with the strongest reaching magnitude 3.8. Now you might think these small quakes are not worth worrying about, but most people do not realize these earthquakes are directly connected to the major fault lines that run beneath millions of Bay Area residents. What is happening right now could be a signal that much larger earthquakes are building up energy deep underground. The truth is, the Bay Area's fault system works like a massive interconnected network. And when one part starts moving, it affects everything else. So what is really happening beneath San Ramon? And should you be concerned about what comes next? Over the past few weeks, the San Ramon Valley has been rattling with a series of small earthquakes. When seismologists talk about an earthquake swarm, they mean something very specific. Unlike a typical earthquake sequence, where one main shock is followed by smaller aftershocks, a swarm is a cluster of earthquakes with similar magnitudes occurring in the same area over days or weeks. The San Ramon swarm fits this pattern perfectly. Instead of one dominant earthquake, we are seeing multiple events ranging from magnitude 2.5 to 3.8, all clustered in roughly the same location. This is not random seismic noise. This is the Earth's crust responding to stress in a very particular way. These earthquakes are occurring along the Franklin Fault, which connects directly to the much larger Calaveras Fault system. Think of it like a tributary feeding into a major river. The Franklin Fault might seem minor compared to famous faults like the San Andreas, but it is mechanically linked to the entire Bay Area Fault Network. Here's where it gets concerning. Many people assume that small earthquakes release pressure and make big earthquakes less likely. That is actually backwards. Small earthquakes release tiny amounts of energy compared to what is needed for a major event. A magnitude 6 earthquake releases about 1,000 times more energy than a magnitude 4. So these magnitude 3 and magnitude 4 earthquakes are not relieving much stress at all. What they might be doing instead is redistributing stress throughout the fault system. When rock breaks during an earthquake, chain, 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 it changes the stress on surrounding areas. Sometimes this loading effect can bring nearby faults closer to their breaking point. Scientists are currently monitoring this activity using a network of sensitive seismometers throughout the region. They are tracking not just the earthquakes themselves, but also subtle ground deformation that might indicate how stress is building up along different fault segments. The current activity levels are definitely above normal background seismicity for this area. The San Ramon Valley typically sees maybe one or two magnitude three plus earthquakes per year. Having multiple events in such a short time frame represents a clear departure from the usual pattern. What makes this particularly interesting from a scientific standpoint is the location. The Franklin Fault sits at a critical junction in the Bay Area Fault System. Stress changes here can influence activity on the Calaveras Fault to the east, the Hayward Fault to the west, and potentially even affect the San Andreas Fault System. Seismologists are paying attention to several key indicators right now. They are looking at the depth of these earthquakes, their focal mechanisms, and whether the activity is migrating along the fault or staying clustered in one spot. They are also monitoring ground deformation using GPS stations and satellite data to see if the surface is moving in ways that might indicate deeper stress changes. The bottom line is this. Earthquake swarms do not always lead to larger events, but they represent a change in the stress state of the fault system. And in a region like the Bay Area, where multiple major faults are already loaded with decades or centuries of accumulated stress, any change deserves serious scientific attention. The Bay Area's fault system is not a collection of separate independent cracks in the earth. It is more like a vast mechanical network where every component influences every other component. When stress builds up on one fault, that energy does not just stay put. It gets transmitted through the surrounding rock to neighboring faults, sometimes hundreds of miles away. 
This process is called stress transfer, and it is one of the most important concepts for understanding earthquake risk in California. When the Franklin Fault experiences increased activity like we are seeing in San Ramon, it is not just a local phenomenon. The stress changes ripple outward through the interconnected fault network. To understand how this works, imagine the Earth's crust as a giant jigsaw puzzle where all the pieces are constantly trying to move past each other. The Bay Area sits at the boundary between two massive tectonic plates, the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate. These plates are grinding past each other at about two inches per year, but that motion is not smooth or continuous. It happens in sudden jerky movements we call earthquakes. The stress from this plate motion gets distributed across multiple fault systems. The San Andreas Fault handles the majority of this motion, but significant amounts of stress also load onto parallel faults like the Hayward, Calaveras, and San Gregorio systems. These faults are all mechanically connected through the, through the surrounding rock. When one fault ruptures, it changes the stress field throughout the region. Some areas experience increased stress, making them more likely to rupture in the future. Other areas actually have their stress reduced, making earthquakes temporarily less likely there. Scientists call this Coulomb stress transfer, and it helps explain why earthquakes often occur in sequences across different faults. We saw this principle in action during 2014, the South Napa earthquake. That magnitude 6.0 event occurred on a relatively minor fault in the Napa Valley, but its effects extended far beyond the immediate rupture zone. The earthquake increased stress on several neighboring fault segments, including portions of the Rogers Creek and Maakama faults to the north. In the months following the Napa earthquake, seismologists detected increased seismic activity on these neighboring faults small earthquakes became more frequent, and some fault segments showed subtle changes in their stress loading patterns. This was not coincidence. The Napa earthquake had mechanically altered the stress state across the entire Northern Bay Area fault network. The same principle applies to the current San Ramon earthquake swarm. The Franklin Fault connects directly to the Calaveras Fault System, which in turn interacts with the Hayward Fault through a complex zone of distributed deformation in the East Bay Hills. Changes in stress along the Franklin Fault can influence seismic hazard throughout this interconnected system. Current earthquake probability maps for the Bay Area reflect this interconnectedness. Scientists do not just calculate the likelihood of earthquakes on individual faults in isolation. They model how stress transfer between faults affects the overall seismic hazard across the region. These calculations show that the Bay Area has a 72% chance of experiencing one or more magnitude 6.7 or greater earthquakes in the next 30 years. What makes the current San Ramon activity particularly noteworthy is its location at a critical junction in this fault network. The Franklin Fault sits between the Calaveras Fault to the east and the Hayward Fault to the west. Both of these major faults are considered overdue for significant earthquakes based on their historical rupture patterns. The Hayward Fault, in particular, has not produced a major earthquake since 1868. Geological evidence suggests this fault typically ruptures every 140 to 200 years, putting it well within the window for its next major event. If stress transfer from the Franklin Fault activity increases loading on the Southern Hayward Fault, it could potentially advance the timing of that earthquake. This is why seismologists monitor fault networks rather than individual faults. In a region like the Bay Area, where multiple major faults are already heavily loaded with accumulated stress, any significant change in the regional stress field deserves careful attention. The interconnected nature of these fault systems means that activity in one location can have far-reaching implications for earthquake risk throughout the entire region. The question everyone wants answered is whether the San Ramon earthquake swarm is a warning sign of something much larger coming. The truth is, 
Earthquake science cannot give a definitive yes or no answer, but it can tell you what patterns to watch for. Scientists distinguish between two types of small earthquake activity, swarms and foreshock sequences. Swarms, like what we are seeing in San Ramon, are clusters of similar-sized earthquakes that happen over days or weeks without a clear main event. Foreshock sequences are different. They are smaller earthquakes that occur in the hours, days, or weeks before a major earthquake. The challenge is that you can only identify foreshocks after the big earthquake happens. Looking at historical data, only 5 to 10% of earthquakes are preceded by foreshocks that scientists can recognize in real time. Most major earthquakes happen without any warning sequence at all. The 1989 Loma Prieta earthquake provides a good example. In the months before that magnitude 6.9 event, there was increased seismic activity in the region, including some moderate earthquakes on nearby faults. But at the time, scientists could not definitively say whether these were foreshocks or just normal background activity. It was only after Loma Prieta struck that the earlier earthquakes were reclassified as part of the foreshock sequence. So does the San Ramon swarm fit the pattern of concerning foreshock activity? The honest answer is that it is too early to tell. The earthquakes are happening on a fault system that is mechanically connected to larger, more dangerous faults. The activity levels are above normal for this area. But swarms like this happen periodically throughout California without leading to major earthquakes. What scientists can tell you is what they are monitoring. They are tracking whether the earthquake activity is migrating along the fault system, which could indicate that stress is propagating toward larger fault segments. They are measuring ground deformation to see if the surface is moving in ways that suggest deeper stress changes. They are analyzing the focal mechanisms of these earthquakes to understand what type of fault movement is occurring. The Bay Area also benefits from one of the world's most advanced earthquake early warning systems. Shake Alert can detect the initial waves from an earthquake and send warnings to your phone seconds before the strongest shaking arrives. While this system cannot predict earthquakes, it can give you precious seconds to take cover when a major earthquake begins. Current monitoring technology allows scientists to track seismic activity in real time across the entire fault network. If the San Ramon swarm evolves into something more concerning, seismologists will detect those changes quickly. They are looking for specific indicators, such as a migration of activity toward larger fault segments, changes in earthquake depths that might indicate stress transfer to different parts of the fault system or unusual ground deformation patterns. The reality is that earthquake prediction remains beyond current scientific capabilities. What we can do is monitor, prepare, and respond quickly when earthquakes occur. The San Ramon earthquake swarm represents a clear change in the regional stress field that demands scientific attention. These interconnected fault systems do not operate in isolation, and activity on one segment can influence earthquake risk throughout the entire Bay Area network. While we cannot predict exactly when or where the next major earthquake will strike, the current activity serves as a reminder that California's fault systems remain active and potentially dangerous.